Hey, I'm Casey Push from Genius Garage, and today we're continuing the series from my time with the United States Air Force Thunderbirds. And even though there's only eight pilots with that team, there are over 140 personnel that every day make that possible. And today, we're behind the scenes. So, enjoy everyday life at the Air Force Base. I came from Nellis, the base PA here, mm -hmm. and um, I put an application and I got the job with the Thunderbirds. So it's my, my fourth week here. And so next week I start our orientation program. Yes. So once you finish that, then you can wear the uniform. Amazing. I'm obviously really excited about the history out here. In the American Southwest, aviation history is huge. It's hard for me as a history geek not to think about things like Chuck Yeager breaking the sound barrier. And all of the, the milestones and incredible things that have happened here over the last 50, 75 years lead up to this. And the Thunderbirds of the U.S. Air Force are the finest fighter pilots in the world. We actually have uh, a manual that tells us exactly what we're supposed to be doing. Oh, for sure. Yeah, so. You want to pop tires? Dude, hit me. So, yep. 275? Yep. You want to be up on 300? No, we're good right there. Okay. Yeah. So if we travel, I'll serve some up to 300. Sweet. So, those are all good. So what we use this for is we, we pump it to make the pressure up to 3,000. So the okay. first system that he starts is the JFS system. Fortunately, it's in the wheel well. So no, it just is what it is. What we do is we see what you're doing. Over there. Give me a hit. Yeah, go ahead. Right. Yep. A little sweep. Just watch your hit. If you get tired, let me know. No, I'm fine. I don't know yeah. if you guys do it a faster rate or this. You're good. Good? All right. Yes, sir. So we had an easy one. <laughs> Ours is pretty good about it, but I'm some fine. of them take forever. Yeah, so we got I was trying to do it real deliberate to get a full stroke without hitting it, but it uh, stops. That's good. <laughs> Not many people are No, no. <laughs> I gotta be nice to your planes, man. <laughs> And, and uh, depending on where we travel, um, sometimes the runways aren't as well built as here at Nellis. Right. So like uh, Daytona, for instance, will have a really rough runway. And um, that alone will tear these things up. Completely. Like the you can see on the left one, it's kind of got like grooves in it mm -hmm. from just landing so rough. And that's because you do this sometimes. Yeah. Differential pressure indicators. So okay. that, that goes- Looking here? Yep. yep. That goes hand in hand with the hydraulic system. Understood. So if there's anything wrong with pressure or even um, like you have contamination, that, really? that will pop out saying like, hey. It pops know. because it's getting too much resistance if it's contaminated. Yep. Gotcha. Yep. It is actually amazing how much racing is basically taken from aerospace. Oh like, yeah. All the same pins, all the same lines. Yeah, when we were in uh, Daytona, we got to look under the hood and see like all the same like Wiggins fittings, nut yeah. plates, like it was crazy. Yeah. Now when I get up here, mm -hmm. you wanna go like one more? I just, just tuck it. Yeah. Like this. From the corners. Yes. And then keep going. Okay. Just throwing it up. 100 percent Most Wait. of us here don't care. It's just Yes. Yeah. All the pilots have their own bag. Cool. The harness is fascinating. I look forward to learning about that. Yeah. yeah. But on the road, I'll show you later, but on the road in the truck. Yeah. This guy right there, you see that black thing that kind of looks like a shirt? Yeah. 
Is that the out vent or the in? Out. Gotcha. You know, you'll see when they start up, if you look for that, you'll see like it's kind of cloudy. Yeah. Cool. Is it? Yeah. Can is we that, look around just a little yeah, bit? Yeah. Is that, yeah. is that yeah. cool? Yeah. 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 Here, show me around. That's good. I'm Holly. Nice to meet you. Oh, I got That's you. Pretty much what it looks like. Okay. So. Now, is each one for the whole team as a unit, or do you specifically have ones that are designated for individual airplanes? Oh, no, this is for the whole team. Okay. Very nice to meet you, nice sir. Nice to meet you, too. So, pretty much oh, support's pretty much the backbone of uh, the Thunderbirds. Yeah. Because without our equipment, our tools, yeah. we won't be able to turn wrenches exactly. and, and, and fix the aircraft. Yeah. So, what we're in charge of here is to maintain all uh, all the equipment that we have here. Mm -hmm. So all the toolboxes, uh, the special equipment we have for uh, engines, support. just anything support. So anything breaks, we order it, we fix it, or we fix it on the spot. Uh, we also keep track on the, in our computer systems. Okay. We also keep track of inspections. Everything has inspections. So this is uh, all our torque wrenches. Oh wow! Look at that. Yep. Okay. All our torque wrench. The one that got calibrated. What was that? Zero oh, nine twelve, okay. and when it's due. Understood. The biggest thing here is accountability. Of course, accountability. Even a small washer can ground the fleet. If you can't find it, you yes. know we're not going to risk a pilot going up yes. in the air. If you're in a vertical roll and it's wanting to keep you in some more of a one G environment, is that is that effectively why it degrades because of the nature of the computer system? A little bit, yeah. And then it's just trying to catch up. So all the all yeah. the like controls are concerned. Yeah. These are the questions I want to ask. It's no, never it's here. Good. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. good. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, so you'll see like the first few rolls will be fairly tight, you know, nice smooth vertical roll, and then eventually they'll start to get like more and more kind of degraded. And then once that starts to happen, is when we terminate. And then throttle resolution is uh, most of the power for takeoff is like what the last 25 percent or from 80 percent to 100 is where it's making the most thrust down the lower position. Okay. Right. Yeah. So yeah. for takeoff, we can do two kinds of takeoff. So we'll do either mill power takeoff. Yes. Uh, so military thrust is what we call that. And then we is have the standard after. thrust. Or is that getting an after? What's it? No. So that's uh, that's still in standard thrust. Okay. And then we also have an afterburner takeoff. Yeah. So military takeoff is just higher RPMs. It is, yeah. So you're looking up in the 90s for the RPMs there. So actually, the RPMs uh, for military power and afterburner are very similar. Okay. Uh, but afterburners are just dumping a whole bunch of fuel in after the uh, yeah, exactly. Or not compression, but um, yes, after the right. Yeah. yeah. So and I think like, this is like in the final stage. This is uh, not a hard light afterburner. It's like it's a stage sort of. Yeah. So this uh, this has uh, the stages. Actually, uh, this guy Tyler Tyler Tyler. He's one of our engine troops, so he's going to be talking about the afterburner, the stages that have, and things like So it's 13 stages, oh, wow. compression, yeah. Okay. And then your fan is oh, the yeah. first four, and then the rest is a uh, like nine. Right. Okay. And then with regard to the afterburner, it's all the same. Okay, so it's dual spool, so the fan spins your, uh, your LBT, which is the afterburner essentially. Yeah. And then all we do is uh, add fuel to the fire. Yeah. yeah. And in here, it's got your mid port. That's the after this, yeah. Interesting. So, it, so when you're oh, over, is it dumping right here where you see the? These, so uh, it'll, it'll drain a little bit of residual, but um. Well, I meant to say, where is it spraying? In, in all these springs, you see those little pinholes. graduate pilot training and you go yeah. to your weapon system. That's the point where you got kind of like that bachelor's degree level understanding of your aircraft. Okay. And then you That's graduate skill. Effective, effective pilot training. Yeah. First you're, through, you're through pilot training, okay. then you got your weapon system, you learn how to go through weapon system at the boot course, so you understand the weapon system. Then what happens a few years down the road when you start looking at the captain's kind of tracks, like, oh, this one's really sharp, this one's okay. what they're doing. Let's send them to weapon school. Think of that like in your master's or PhD and then graduate level degree. Yeah. It's just like, all right, you understand how this thing operates. Now let's see all the and weapon school is the six months yes, sir. lead up to red flag, green flag. It's actually its own separate thing, but okay. very often you'll see their kind of mesh of things where they're playing with different types of different types and stuff. Uh, but the aggressors are both aggressors for weapon school as well as red flag. So obviously if you're a flying fighter and you want tryouts and new tactic that you're 
to uh, let's say the F-22, yes. uh, you need an aggressor to fly it against. So basically, you just have them go up there, behave like whatever aircraft you need to behave like, and like, all right, let's see how this works. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. And uh, we'll debrief that, and based off of that, we're constantly sharpening the spear. Yes, that's my kind of learning experience. It is I the love best that. learning I experience. I love that. 100%, what do you got? Let's sharpen that edge. And that's kind of a key thing, is bringing these new minds to kind of look at a problem set with a new understanding, yes. try to figure out new ways to fight with jets. Some of them, you know, are three, three decades old. So we know how true. we can take this technology and continue to keep on cutting edge. Likewise, we're testing out new gear, new weapons, new things up. Really? So we're For car guys out there, it's like your resto mind, right? Uh, <laughs> in a way. In the idea way? is you're just no? constantly adding new bits and pieces. You're okay. about, just like if you tweak it with your car, you're constantly introducing new tweaks that you can put inside the, uh, the gear of the aircraft, of course. Just polishing it, parts. developing it. Yeah, I mean, a great example is our F-16s. So these are Block 52 F-16s, which are the newest in the fleet. Uh, and obviously, when we started back in 1983 flying the F-16, it was a very different F-16 oh, than yeah. we have today. And frankly, what we operate here is a frontline combat machine that we expect to continue to serve the frontlines for decades to come. It's a good thing to hear. It's a definitely kind of like the priority of the fighter pilot world. So. Well, we got one of those today, so it's perfect. So right? I heard. I felt it was appropriate <laughs> to mention. We might have to go for a ride. Well, you yeah. know, yeah. So. No, it, it's light, it's quick, it's uh, very versatile in terms of what you do. It can strike targets on the ground, it can yes. really good up in the air. And of course, it puts on a heck of an air show, which is why we like it. So. Yeah. Well, it's keeping everybody. Uh, there's so much going on here, but uh, I love what you guys do. I love what you're representing, not only for the United States Air Force, but all the armed services, but also the history of our own nation. It's Absolutely. really showing the best. And we really think that's an important part. You know, we represent 660,000 total force airmen in the Guard Reserve and active duty. 60,000 of them right now are deployed downrange, and we really want to make sure we're representing them in a way exactly. we would want to be represented here downrange. Because most of us, we served our time downrange, we're probably going to go back to those combat units when we deploy our time on the Oh, yeah. And I think maybe a great takeaway point from this is when you see the Thunderbirds up at the air show, it's not just a pilot in an aircraft. It's Absolutely. not just that. It's representing everybody, the thousands and thousands of people that make everything happen for the you know, security of our nation and the world. Yeah. The, the 12 pilots that we do have, or 12 officers that we do have, eight being pilots, we have about 140 versus support personnel. Yeah. It's talking eight percent. Absolutely, less. it's yeah, about it's like five percent. It's uh, just over, or just under thirty crew fields, just in our team alone. That's, right. that's representative of the entire Air Force. You know, we got some really amazing pilots, but they're being backed up by some of the best professionals from a whole variety of. Oh, of course, we've been seeing it all, and I'm massively honored to be here. Awesome, well, we're happy to have you here, man. So the pilots go a step soon. Can't wait to show you those guys. Yeah. 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 You were mentioning like the four higher guys you bring in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. all the contracts. <laughs> The retired, they got retired Air that. Force pilots who still want to come out and fly. <laughs> uh, they get a really cool gig out of it. I want that job someday. Yeah. <laughs> that right? sounds awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. It's fantastic. I'm Absolutely. looking forward to everything else to come, you guys. Absolutely. Cool.